Hey everybody, welcome back. You know what time it is. We're here, Time Flies, for Time Tuesday with Evan Max. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna tie an Ultramysis. So this is a great little tailwater pattern um, on a fishery that might have some mysis in the reservoir above. A lot of times we'll put mysis in our reservoirs to help control the habitat. And uh, those little shrimps get pushed out um, through the waterway over the dam or through the feeder and into the tailwater below and the trout love them. They're gonna gorge on them and just eat them up every chance they get. So this is a good pattern to have if you're fishing any of those kind of areas. Not a difficult tie overall. Um, today we're gonna tie on a falling mill hook and this is a size 18, which is an appropriate size for the mysis shrimp. Depending on where you're at, you can get away from, get away with uh, 16s down to 20s, typically a smaller bug overall or crustacean. I'm gonna pinch the barb on this fulling mill, FM 1270. And we'll get her locked in the vise here. And then the thread that I'm using today is just a little Vivas, the good old Vivas. I got a 12 aughts in white. You can use GSP as well. A nice clear GSP would be a good option for this pattern, some nano silk if you prefer that type of a thread. And with some locking wraps, we'll just dress our hook nice and quickly, work on back to our standard starting position there where that barb is, and we'll tie in a tail. The tail on this is an Antron style material. I'm using the Sparkle and Merger yarn from Hairline. This is the clear white for the tail. And I'm gonna Clip it square, I'll come back and feather it after I get it tied in, but square it off to tie it in. And just a nice short stubby little tail. You can kind of use that hook point to gauge so that each fly that you tie in your box has good consistency. It's a good measuring point for this material. And then we're gonna secure it in and walk on forward and keeping in mind that we're gonna do a wire body on this. Just like you would a Copper John, you want nice, smooth, even thread wraps so that when you go to wrap that wire forward, it's nice and easy and you don't get a bunch of gaps. The white thread base is pretty forgiving overall, so even if you do end up with some gaps, you don't notice them too badly. So we'll clip that out and then tie in that wire. And that's what this pattern is named after. It was uh, created by Andrew Reed. And when they came out with colored ultra wire, he started developing this fly. There's a good little story of it on the Uncle Feather Merchants page if you wanna check out his full take on it. Um, but we're gonna do a combination of small silver and white wire today. And that just is a great color combination for imitating the mysis shrimp. So we'll get a couple of these pulled off of the spool. If you're doing a few of these flies, you can pull off quite a bit and then just keep using that material. Go ahead and marry them together and tie them in together. Right on the side of the hook shank here. And if you noticed, I am leaving myself some room up front. That's gonna be for the eyes and the head of the fly, as well as a little extra material that adds some movement. And we'll see that in a minute. But until then, just getting the wire secured. And again, consciously laying down thread wraps, nice and smooth on forward for our base to wrap the wire on top of. And I always like to half hitch before I go to wrap wire. Just keeps my thread from moving around. Gives me a stopping position as well. Throw a couple in there. And wrap the wire on forward. So kind of comb through it a little bit, get them to marry up nicely and stay together. And then we can wrap them on forward. Just trying to keep everything touching nice and tight as we go. 
It's a uh, kind of a middleweight fly. You not, don't have a bead on it or anything like that, so it's not a heavier pattern for a subsurface fly, but the wire does help get it down in the column. Definitely gonna wanna fish it in a lot of situations with some weight and or a heavier lead bug, whatever you prefer in regards to your nymphing setup, this one can be thrown in that rig where you feel it's appropriate. I like it as a trailer though. Coming off the back of my rig. So you can see my wraps aren't perfect and although I'm trying to keep it together nicely, there's some gaps, you don't really notice them too well. You might be able to see them better than me through the lens of the camera. But that white thread underneath really blends it all nicely together. So once we're on up to the front there, capture it off as usual with some locking wraps. Walk back on it so that we know it's not going to come undone and then we can break out the excess material. And then we got a fun part for this fly. We're gonna use a little Maxima, 20 pound Maxima. This is a great leader building material, so a very versatile product that you can keep in your tackle box for your butt sections and whatnot, but also caters nicely to building uh, kind of bead eyes on here. So what we're gonna do is land our thread where we want those eyes, about a hook eyes distance back, and we'll X wrap it into place. It can be a little tricky to do. So a couple one way, a couple the other way there. Make sure it's not gonna sneak forward on me. We'll put a wrap or two in front of it, give myself room to finish the fly off. And then I'm gonna clip it down, fairly short but long enough so that I can come back in and burn the ends to kind of make them a little more bulbous overall. And this is definitely a touchy part of the fly. You wanna sneak in there closely, but you don't wanna burn your thread or anything else that you got on there. So very carefully, um, and if I talk while I do this, I'm gonna blow the flame into the fly. So. Um, I always like to start my flame and then move it close to the material and just slowly burn it down. So again, hold your breath. And melt it on down into place there. And I do like to get it fairly close for this pattern. Just real slow and steady, kind of find that starting position and then work in on it. You can purchase eyes as well. We sell them in, in uh, black and clear and some different colors and olive and whatnot. Uh, the chameleon red just is a, a really good imitation for this bug because they do tend to have sort of a red hue or even like an orange hue um, to a lot of mysis shrimp. There we go, that looks about right. So you can see either side is burnt, just kind of protruding off of there. And then we're gonna come in and dub the head. And I think he uses, not 100% on this, I think it's an Antron dubbing um, that's used for the head in the commercial pattern. I'm gonna use some Senyo laser dubbing today. Just got a nice sheen to it. I always have to use a little bit of wax when I'm working with senyos and other dubbings that aren't necessarily built to noodle real tight. A wax will help it so that you can do so. And we'll build up a little bit behind it. And then we're gonna do that same thing as, as sort of X-Rack wrap around it and just build it up slightly here. A little bit more. And leaving ourselves just a little bit of room on the front end because we're going to come back in, like I said, with one more material that really caters to the action and movement of this fly overall. It's kind of my favorite aspect of this bug. A little more. Just 
just like so. And then we'll sneak up front and add that last material. And it's gonna be the good old magic marabou. So we got our white marabou to match. And we don't need a whole lot. Just gonna peel a few of the barbels off of the side here. And really only, you know, four or five probably. And we're gonna work down to the tips and measure this just to be the length of the shank there. We're gonna tie it on on the bottom. Then when this fishes, it'll pulsate really nicely, give it really nice movement. It'll kind of stick to the, the hook overall um, and just really give a realistic presentation of the bug. And then switch hands and position it right on top here, uh, which is actually the underside of the bug, but that rotary helps the tie-in method and being on top more natural kind of positioning overall. Spin my thread a little bit to get it to reverse bend here so I can grab it. And make sure we got the right length on there. Shorten it up a little bit. And we can secure it on down. So a couple on top. We'll sneak right in front of it there. Trim out that extra bit. And then all we got to do is give her a whip finish. So a cool little mysis pattern, kind of a different one. There, there's a lot of mysis shrimp patterns out there that are all real similar. Um, and I just think that this marabou aspect in partnership with that wire makes for a really killer pattern. That wire is going to help get it into the zone. The marabou is going to help cater to kind of the movement of the fly overall. It's got those beady little eyes. Makes for a really effective mysis shrimp pattern. So definitely one to have in the box if you're a big tailwater junkie and you fish in reservoirs that are loaded up with those mysis shrimp. So give it a shot, tie it up, take it out to the water, catch some fish on it. Really appreciate you watching.